Hello everybody, it's AJ back again, and what is Gucci? And today I want to talk about iterable and iterator, and what each of these interfaces implement, and why they make Java just a little bit easier. Now, something I want to show first is that one of the first things I'm going to do here is I am going to make an array list. And did I forget something? I think I did. I'm going to make a constructor called juice and control shift F that so I can do that. And I'm going to instantiate an array list. And this array list is going to contain integers because I just wanted to. And and see, I have this array list titled AJ. And let's say I want to add something. I can add 12, and then I can, sorry, I can add something else. I can add 33, and I can keep doing this. I'll do it one more time, and we'll add my favorite number 23 after Michael Jordan, my favorite basketball player. And the next thing I want to do, and let's say I want to go through all these elements. Well, the great thing that Java has provided for you this is they have something called an, an iterator, which allows you to, as it is said, iterate over all the elements in, a, in some collections or sets. Now how I do this is I can go iterator, I need to declare the variable to use it, so iterator integer, which just is an iterator equals, equals aj dot iterator. And what, what's happening here is that there is in the array list data structure, there is an inner class titled iterator that the that I am getting, and I'm returning a new iterator. And while I do, and then I can set up a while loop that say while my iterator has an next, I can sit, I can print out the next element in that set. Now what has next is, is checks if there is a next element. And next prints out the current element while advancing it to the next element. And also something I can do is there are three methods for the it, iterator interface. And that is, I have it in the Java API here, that is has next, next and remove. And it returns, again, like I said, it returns true if the iterator has more elements, so it can continue going in the while loop. Um, it returns the next element in the rate, in duration, which it, and the while advancing to the next element. So even though it's kind of improperly named next, if I were to do this, next would print out, uh, well, let me just run it, actually, because I'm awesome. Um, let me just make a little main method. I'm sorry, I forgot to make it static. And string args, always make it this. And I'm just going to create a new juice object. And hopefully that prints everything out. If I run this baby. And you see, there you go. So even though this says next, it actually prints out the current element, advances to the next one. Um, checks if that has a next one and does, and then it keeps going until, oh, what has next, keeps on checking if it has an element to iterate, so has ne so it says, okay, does it have another one? Yes, and then it goes to, and then it's, it's at 12, it says, okay, print out 12, 12, then advance to 33, and it says, is 33 okay? Yes, and then it goes to, it prints out 33 and advances to 23, and then it says, is there another one after 23? No but it still goes after the while loop. So remember, so if, and you can see here in the Java API that the iterator interface returns, um, is has next, next to remove, and is usually defined in collections and list iterators and for enumeration. Now something else I used, what, now see what the, like I said, the, like I said, the array list has this method called public iterator item iterator, and it returns the new iterator that is defined that is an inner class inside the array list class. 
which you can't see because it's Java's implementation. And so here you go, we have we have a class of the iterator and what it hap what happens is when I call the iterator, it makes a new iterator and then it goes inside the inside private class inside the array list or the your data structure and it has those methods that then again make sure that then that are defined the has next next and this polymorphism allows you to notice that you can iterate over multiple objects because you have defined it for different things now that's all I want to say for today guys just remember that the Oh, there was one more thing I need to say. Um, if when you do iter iterator or iterable, my bad, you are able to. That is what allows you to use the for each loop. Basically, when you implement iterable and it returns the set of elements, you are basically the for each loop is making its own iterator and going through it. That's why in a for each loop you cannot stop. You cannot stop the um, loop from going unless you set a condition, and that's because. It's to, it's just defining an interlater and basically doing all this code for you. So if I did for, let's try int i in aj. Oops, just give me an error there. No, and then I go size so i. See if that works, and then print that out. And it see it does the same thing, and that's because the for loop is defined, and it's just saying, oh hey, this is a for each loop. But can I use this? Um, does the data structure is the data structure I am going through implementing the iterable interface? And it it does. If you look here, it's right here in array list. It does do the iterable interface, and that allows you to use a 4G loop. So remember, iterable is just what returns the iterator object, and then you want to implement iterator inside your data structure. I mean, or inside a class inside your data structure, so a secure class, and be able to implement that.